can say with conviction that I think the Cash Pawn Shop engine is the strongest one available economically for Haley, the new ID. And as such, I'm going to build her around the Cash Pawn Shop engine and see how far I can get. Here, I'm swapping out your uh, standard tier 1 prepaid Kate deck, uh, swapping out the entire economic backbone for uh, Cash Pawn Shop. Now, Cash Pawn Shop by itself doesn't really reap a lot of credits, so you want to play Daily Cast side it, alongside it because Daily Cast gives you plus 7 credits uh, when used with Pawn Shop. And to make things better, we are going to throw in a Cybersoft Macro Drive and a uh, Sherazard as well to make those cash installs worth lots more money. With both installed, a single cash will net you 7 credits. So, in a sense, your Cybersoft Macro Drive and Sherazard are like your prepaid voice pads and your cash is like your show gamble your daily cast is also on the power level show gamble um, which is not too bad um, so let's look at my opening hand um, I keep this mostly because um, this deck is very reliant on professional contacts for card draw and money uh, when you do not find yeah because you want to get your cashes while simultaneously gaining credits and Proco does just that and it's getting quite popular in prepaid kits anyway nowadays. So I keep this hand because the diesels will probably allow me to draw Proco, but that's not the case. Instead, I draw a Sure Gamble, and I can get rid of a couple of programs. Cash SMC, a very good starting combo. Unfortunately, I'm forced to ditch a Scavenge because of this. I cannot afford to throw anything else in my hand away. Clone chips are extremely important. Daily cast for money is very important as well. And look, I draw another daily cast. So. The thing with Haley is that you can actually afford to overdraw. Um, unlike prepaid kit, where overdrawing will cause you to trash all your programs into your um, heap for nothing. Whereas with Haley, because you can install two items in the span of one click, you can actually afford to draw twice in one turn, install for a third click, and do whatever you want for your last click. In this case, I face checked his HQ because I wanted to perform a legwork run very soon. Uh, but uh, I turned made a U-turn on that decision because he showed me a bunch of non-agendas in his hand and installed the Caprice on R&D. Very well then. So I draw one card and I want to pressure him into raising the Caprice, so I see the Eli here. A uh, tough choice. I have two choices essentially. I can click through the Eli or I can summon the dog. The problem with clicking through Eli is that my intention here was actually to trash the mental health clinic. I wanted to deny his economy, that is very important, a very important thing I've learned from playing so much RP during the regional season. So here, I decided to bring the dog out so I won't lose clicks, and I failed the side game, but I bounce off to the remote to trash his MHC. Um, in the meantime, I was, I was forced to trash Sharpshooter because I was my hand size was full, and now he shows me an NAPD in hand along with an ELP. That is something to take note of. In the meantime, I just continue drawing up and I draw into more programs I don't really want to draw here. I have two daily cards going, so I have that going for me, and I really want to deny the Caprice before he gets his Surugi onto R&D and locks it out. So here I again force him to play the side game with me, and I fail. At least I'm forcing two credits from him every single time I do this. It's not very good for me, but um, the pressure must go on while R&D is still porous. And now it's no longer porous, there's a Surugi, I think it's a Surugi, on R&D and an ELP. Very bad news. Now here I just, I'm just i going to play passively. Since ELP is out, there's no point in running. I find my Proco. So I decide to install the Proco. There are no other resources to go with it however, so the Haley install is a little wasted. That's no matter though, because Proco will allow me to recover pretty well from here. And don't forget, the daily casts are still ticking down. So here I draw into my second cache, but no types of macro drive, no Shahrazad, which means that uh, installing the cache is somewhat marginal and no ESOPs either, that's an important thing. No ESOPs, so it's only a net gain of 2, but I do get SMC along with it. Now here, I attempt to dispel the ELP, I have a 60% yes, 60 shot of hitting the NAPD in hand, even more if he drew into agendas, but that wasn't the case. I didn't hit the NAPD and that really really hurt. I needed the NAPD. I was setting up for the run and it almost worked out for me, but no, the NAPD did not come. Having ELP on the board is very bad for me because I only run, Lakework is my only run event. 
unlike prepaid kit, which has dirty laundry and Steam Hack. I couldn't find influence for Steam Hack, and so now I'm going to pay a lot of click tax, the ELP tax. So since I find the only uh, thing I can install from my hand is two hardware, so I go on to install the RNDIs, double RNDIs. Hopefully that will distract him into having to defend RD even more. RD is the only way I can dig RD. I don't run Maker's Eye because there just isn't enough space for that. And I have no prepaid voice pads, so I have to pay the full two credits for uh, Maker's Eye anyway, which isn't very worth it. I mean, it is worth it, but um, yeah, it's not as worth it as it would be in prepaid kit. Anyway, I thought he was scoring an NAPD. Obviously, he's scoring an Nisei, and that basically causes me to lose the game. It's almost impossible to play right now uh, with a Nisei on the board. Here, what I do is I felt like I had enough of bad draw luck. No ESOPs, no sites of macro drive. I'm going to get the Shareza out myself with an SMC. This allows me to free install the cash in my hand, and then I proceed to Lucky Find. This is why Haley is so awesome. I was able to play Lucky Find and the cash for my hand on the same turn with two clicks left. And get more money out of the cash with the Sherazad. Now I think Sherazad is a very underrated card. As long as your opponent is not playing Power Shutdown, it's very, very good. Um, especially since your Barrier Breaker, your Green Dog, is a temporary breaker as well. You can just host your Sherazad with very little consequence. Uh, in the meantime, I do refresh my dog, and refreshing my dog comes as an install, which allows me to get my Mimic out. So, it's click efficiency all around, and this allows me to actually keep a flow of credits. Unfortunately, um, I need to find agendas right now. So, I'm going to run our, our HQ, and he does rest a code gear against me, which means I need to bring out my Cyber Cypher. Trashing both caches on the board, which is very painful, because... It could be ESOPs for 6 credits, but I haven't found my ESOPs yet, so I'm just going to crash, trash the caches for the deck work run to be successful. One of the agendas was a future perfect, and I won that side game. Very, very clutch right here. I needed that. So now, ELP fizzles, and I have more agenda points than him. But there's still a Nisei counter that I have to worry about. But I desperately, desperately needed that, because uh, my Econ 3 requisite cards were not coming out. No types of Mega Drive, and especially no ESOPs is really hurting my economy. It seems like I have a, quite a few credits right now, but I could use much more. I want to be running much more frequently than this. If I can run his R&D four times every turn, his, his Caprice will eventually fizzle out, and I can finally start digging R&D. This is why money is very important. Well, here money won't pay me through Ichi. Very annoying piece of ice, I thought that was a Surugi, so I was forced to click through the Ichi. I'll get a parasite to deal with the Ichi later. In the meantime, he finally found his Sundew and it's starting to do work. I wanted to trash the Sundew, but I couldn't last turn because I had to click through the Ichi. So I continue right here. Again, I want to contest the Sundew, but I need to find some sort of tutor. And I do find it in the form of clone chip. So I'll be looking to do that next turn. But first, parasite down the Ichi. I want to make my runs as efficient as possible, so ideally I should be running R&D and then bouncing over to his remote to trash the Sundew. Now, very interesting include here, he's playing Tenman line and he swaps the Ichi over onto an irrelevant server, bringing a more ferocious, ferocious piece of ice on R&D. Well, I'm going to contest HQ instead, there should be agendas in there, let's see if I can get them. Definitely there's at least one NAPD in there that I still haven't the luck to find. I hit the Caprice Nisei, that obviously goes into the trash. And you notice that I'm still on a healthy credit level, even though um, yeah, I haven't found any money cards. Thanks to professional contacts, I'm gaining quite a lot of money. So here, with my big stash of cash, I need to force him to lose money. Again, you cannot let RP get their credits off, and I'm definitely not going to let that happen. To the best of my ability anyway. But he does interns the Sundew, so I need to contest that once again. Very annoying. So instead, I'm going to sit back this turn, so I can build up my board state. More importantly, get that clone chip out, because I need to start contesting servers. It's quite annoying that there's a code gate on the remote and HQ. I need to get the other side side out, so that I can start managing, uh, or rather placing pressure on multiple servers. ELP comes back on the board. Very annoying current to deal with with my deck. Not much I can do about that though. At the end of my turn, 
I sacked clone chip to get the cash out. I decided to forego the tutor power of cap of clone chip because I desperately needed the money at that point, and I needed to refresh my dog. I knew I was out of scavengers at this point, so the only way I can get more dog tokens is to install dog from my hand. Hence, I chose to install cash uh, before my turn started. So here, obviously, I ran to the Swirgy and Eli, and I failed the side game again. Well, at least I'm going to get my Sundew gone off the board, and I'll get the, S uh, the MHC while I'm at it. Next turn, I'll just continue building up. Unfortunately, this leaves me at one credit, which blows a huge scoring window for him. Luckily, he didn't take advantage of it. So, um, Ichi dies. Very important, I need my Parasite back to deal with the Surugi on R&D. I still have one more clone chip available before I'm forced to play Proko. I mean, uh, play Levi. And I finally found my Esau's Pawn Shop. I ran three copies of it. All three copies were hiding in the bottom five cards of my deck. Will you believe it? That's ridiculous. Um, I lost at least nine credits this game because Esau's didn't come up early. Probably at least 12 actually. Considering all three daily casts could have been Esau's away, two caches at least gone down the drain, Lots and lots of stuff could have been pawned off, but no. Aesops didn't show up, and I could have at least 12 more credits more than what I have right now. Well, that's what you get. It's like drawing all your econ events before your prepaid. Yeah, it's as if all three prepaid voice pads are stuck at the, stuck at the bottom of your deck. You can't do much about that. So, um, I install my clone chip and get down to work immediately. There is an agenda for the picking. And I need to contest it. Uh, I tried getting through archives so that I can bounce off to the remote, but alas, it wasn't meant to be. The Enigma stopped me cold. So yeah, Enigma is a very good tech, both against Enoch and against this sort of deck that only runs size size. I spent all my recursion on caches and dogs. I don't have enough recursion left for code gatebreakers, and that is killing me. Yep, I definitely wish I had a Golden Blade here instead. This is costing me a lot of time and energy. So I continue dead drawing with uh, Proko. Dead drawing because the rest of my deck is all ESOP pawn shops and useless programs. So there's actually no point in using Proko. It's equivalent to clicking for credits at this point. He continues swapping ice around with uh, Tenma Line, knowing that the Surugi is about to die. And. Well, I find my final Sai Sai, and that's definitely going on R&D. I need to get rid of the Caprice on R&D, it's really causing a lot of trouble, and he's at match point. If I can get through R&D, I can lock him with 3 excesses every single run. So, um, once again, Oh, I do pass the side game this time, we both beat 2, but he ends the run with a Nisei counter and threatens to win the next turn with the NAPD that has eluded me from the beginning of the game. It's now in that remote, and I can't steal it because I'm only on 4 credits, I have no recursion, and I'm pretty sure it's an Enigma on the remote that I can't get to. Without recursion, I think I'm doomed. The best I can do is to install Atman 2 and hope that it's an Enigma that's on the remote. But I can't do that. I won't have enough credits to steal the NAPD at the end of it. So, yeah, I'm pretty screwed now. So, basically, at this point, I realized that there was no point running through the remote. My only avenue of, uh, to even have a remote chance of winning was to run R&D and hope to top deck two Niseis. And that's after killing the Caprice. So that's exactly what I did here. I ran, I paid through. Thankfully, the Eli is easy to break with dog all this while, but I quickly realized that I was ending the run with 3 credits because I spent 1 side credit. So I couldn't steal any NAPDs, but it doesn't matter. There were no NAPDs for the picking. There weren't any agendas in fact, so I just called game and took credits. Or rather, I ran the remote for the sake of running it, and yeah, it was a lotus field. In the end, I would never have been able to get through that. That's what happens when you run out of recursion. It's awfully painful. Uh, I've learned a lot from this game on what I need to patch for my deck. Firstly, double side side is a very bad idea for this deck because you want to use your recursion for caches and dogs. You don't have enough recursion to bounce your side sides around 
and that will cost you games. One side side is good to uh, place your primary pressure on, usually R&D, but you need either a Zoo Keymaster or a Guardian Blade to cover all other code gates. Um, double side side is a bad idea. Secondly, I'm not a very big fan of the buy AR lab access, unlike prepaid kit where you can potentially play it for 2 credits. Here you always have to pay the full 5 credits to reset your deck and that is a huge tempo hit that many cops can take advantage of. Uh, I, yet you do need the entire deck recursion that Levi provides because this deck runs a finite amount of money. Sooner or later you realize that you've run out of dog tokens, you've trashed your entire rig to Aesop's Pawn Shop and you need to reset and that one Levi is the only way out of that situation. Had this game dragged on longer, I would have had to play the Levi within a couple more turns. Basically, I think this deck has potential, but it definitely needs some sort of tweaking. Do you have any ideas for me? Do leave them in the comment section. Thanks for watching. Happy netrunning.